Let us pray. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jehovah Almighty. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jehovah Almighty. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Jehovah Almighty. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Jehovah Almighty. Almighty God, the Lord of hosts himself, the defender of the defenseless, the rock of ages. We bless your holy name because we can rely on you. We know you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. And we too on our side, we know all will be well. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you've done for us in the past. Thank you for what you are doing in the present. Thank you for what you will do in the future. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, please send your word to us again today and take us even deeper into yourself in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going on with our study on going higher. Now we are in part 57. Part 57. First King chapter 19, 13 and 14 is where we see her. First Kings chapter 19, from verse 13 to 14. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he rubbed his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entry in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And now even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Last week, we look at this particular passage from a very, very positive angle as God was sending a message to someone in particular asking him not to be afraid. And we want to look at it from another angle today from a deeper perspective. I mean that section where Elijah said, 
I'm the only one left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. The one that the Almighty God can use is usually very rare. And uh, not only is such a fellow very rare, such a fellow he found at all. He's an endangered species. You see, in, in Ezekiel 22, verse 30, Ezekiel 22, verse 30, God said, I sought for a man who would stand in the gap before me. Someone who would stand in the gap between myself and the people. Who oh, say, God, please spare the people, spare the people, so that I will not destroy them? He said, but I can't even find one. Very sad testimony. People that God can say, because of you, I will spare your nation. They are very rare people. Very rare. I mean, if we read Genesis chapter 6, from verse 1 to 8, Genesis chapter 6, from verse 1 to 8, and then read Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, Genesis 7, verse 1, when God was going to destroy the first world with a flood, he could only find one man, Noah. That's a serious, serious situation indeed. Very rare people who could stand in the gap between God and the people. Now, if such a person is found, the moment such fellow is found, all hell breaks loose against the fellow. Because we're talking about going higher. <laughs> and as we go higher, we need to know some of these deep things. The moment the devil knows that the hand of God is upon you, that he has found you, you're going to be a vessel unto honor in his hand. Hmm. The kingdom of darkness is going to say, all right, let's see. I mean, let's take some examples. Moses. In Exodus chapter 3, from verse 1 to 10, Exodus 3, from verse 1 to 10, when God said, all right, I've had the cry of my people in Egypt. Now I want to get them out. He now turned to Moses. Hey, Moses, let's go and get them out. You know Moses. You know his story. Even before he was born, death was waiting for him. Exodus chapter 1 from verse 15 to 16. Exodus 1, 15 to 16. Somehow, the devil knew that the deliverer was about to be born. So he moved Pharaoh to say to the midwives, Every boy that is born, kill. The girls, spare them. That was a time when <laughs> Moses was born, Exodus chapter 2, from verse 1 to 10, the mother had to hide him, Exodus 2, from verse 1 to 10, for months, 
until his cry became too loud. Could not be hidden. And I said, I have to take him and drop him in a basket in River Nile. Then, finally, he began to fulfill his purpose. And then one problem after another, after another. Numbers chapter 12, from verse 1 to 3. Numbers 12, from verse 1 to 3. Miriam, his sister, Aaron, his brother, ganged up against him. Are you surprised? Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 36, Matthew chapter 10, verse 36, he said, a man's foe shall be there of his own household. The moment they saw that, ah, uh, this little boy has now become the leader, his own sister, the one who was watching over him when they put him in a basket, his own brother, Aaron, they ganged up against him. And then after that one, number 16, from verse 1 to 5, number 16, from verse 1 to 5, you have Korah, Datan, and Abiram. And they ganged up together with about 250 people. Who told you you are the only prophet around? We too can hear from God. You know the story. Or take another example. Take David. According to Acts chapter 13, from verse 20 to 22, Acts 13 from verse 20 to 22, God said, I found a man who will do my will, all my will. As uh, we have learned before, if he says I have found, it means he has been seeking. And then finally he found one, just one man. And then what happened? As soon as David was anointed, First, a lion came. Then, a bear came. And then, Goliath came. 4 Samuel 17, from verse 34 to 51. 4 Samuel 17, 34 to 51. And after I got rid of all those three, then, father-in-law came. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 18 from verse 1 to 9. First Samuel 18 from verse 1 to 9. And I'm talking of a dying law who didn't even hide his hatred. First Samuel 18, 10 to 11. First Samuel 18, 10 to 11. He threw a javelin at this poor boy. He was king. Of. And then he made a plan. All right, if Javelin can't catch him, let me get him through my daughter Michael, or Michael, in 4 Samuel 18, from verse 20 to 27. 4 Samuel 18, 20 to 27, he said, all right. Tell him, uh, you can have my daughter, but I don't want a dowry. I, I just want you to go and kill some Philistines. He thought he would die there. Oh, let's take Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 7 to 10, 1 Kings 18, from verse 7 to 10, the Bible says, He have searched for Elijah in all the nations. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 22 to 40, 1 Kings 18, from verse 22 to 40, Elijah stood alone against 450 prophets of Baal. 
in a battle that was winner takes all. <laughs> Anybody who didn't win this battle is going to die. Um, you know what happened. He won that battle. He came down to Jezreel, and Jezebel was waiting. First King chapter 19 from verse 1 to 3. First King 19, 1 to 3. After all that, he still went on to face another king. Second Kings chapter 1 from verse 1 to 12. Second Kings 1 from verse 1 to 12. King called King Isaiah. Who wanted to capture just one man and send 50 soldiers and a captain. First time, second time, third time. Or consider, Dan, uh, consider Daniel. I'm just talking of people who said, I'm going to stand for God. And how as soon as they have located, uh, the enemies began to move in. In Daniel chapter 1, from verse 8 to the end, Daniel 1 from verse 8 to the end, Daniel said, I'm not going to defile myself and test us and see he came out, one of the wisest men in the land. And the enemy noted, mm, so this is this fellow who even in slavery is going to stand for God. Okay, Daniel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 13. Daniel 2 from verse 1 to 13. The next thing is, the king slept, had a dream, and forgot the dream. And what led to that, I mean, what followed that is that the king now said, wise men, bring all of them. Come and tell me my dream. If you can't, give me the dream and the interpretation, you are dead. The Bible said clearly, clearly, they sought for Daniel to slay him. The Bible didn't write that one for fun. There were many wise men. That they were particularly after Daniel. Of course, you know what happened in Daniel chapter 6. You can read it from verse 1 to the end. Daniel 6, 1 to the end. When they discovered that Daniel was excelling in everything, his peers, colleagues, decided. <laughs> That we, this fellow, he's not going to sin against his God, so let's use that to trap him. What of Peter? As soon as the enemy heard in John 21, from verse 1 to 19, John 21, from verse 1 to 19, that Jesus Christ said, all right, you're forgiven, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lamb, follow me. Ah, trouble came. One prison after the other. Acts chapter 5, 15 to 18. Acts 5, 15 to 18. Acts 12, 1 to 11. And I'll give you just one more example, and then we'll go along to the next point. Consider Paul, the apostle. When he was persecuting the church, killing people, hailing people to prison, oh, the devil was hailing him. But read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, from verse 10 to 25. Acts 9, 10 to 25. The moment he was anointed, the moment a man of God laid his hand on him and said, all right, well, God told me you are now going to be leading the campaign. <laughs> the, the Bible said they have to even let him down by a basket. 
the people who were already on his side before now wanted to kill him. Now, this is not to frighten those of you who are going to stand up for God. As a matter of fact, I told you last week, you have nothing to fear. Because one with God is always a majority. I have one major promise from the Almighty God. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 10 to 12, Exodus 3, 10 to 12, he told Moses, I will be with you. He told Joshua, in Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1 to 8, Joshua 1 from verse 1 to 8, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 34 to 37, 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 37, the only promise given to David is go and the Lord will be with you. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17 to 19, Jeremiah 1, 17 to 19, God said to Jeremiah, they will fight against you, but they won't prevail. Why? I will be with you. God was with Moses. And so Miriam paid the price for daring to attack a divine partner. Numbers chapter 12, verse 14 to 15. Numbers 12, 14 to 15. In number 16, 24 to 34, Number 16, 24 to 34, Korah, Datan, and Abiram, who ganged up against the one who is the divine partner, divine representative. They died, swallowed their life by their... 1 Samuel chapter 30, from verse 1 to 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30, from verse 1 to 6. Even Saul and all his children died in one day. You need to know if you decide to be God's partner, if you decide to be the one that God can say, I have found a man, I have found a woman. Hey, hell may break loose, but all you need is God being with you. Why? Because the cry today is still the same as it had always been. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Isaiah 6 verse 8. Who will go for us? Who are we going to send? Who is going to stand up and say, I and I alone? Does it matter? Those who are after my soul or after my life, I'm going to stand. Philippians 1, 20 to 21. Philippians 1, 20 to 21. God is he saying, hey, where is this fellow who will say in living or in dying, I am for God. He's looking for someone. In Esther chapter 4, from verse 13 to 16, Esther chapter 4, from verse 13 to 16, the Bible tells us in 
The nation of Israel was in trouble. And God was looking for someone who will rescue the nation. And Esther said, if I die, I die. But I will stand up for my people. God is crying now for an individual. An individual who's made up his or her mind, I won't be afraid. It doesn't matter what is happening. I am going to stand up for God. I believe that's probably the purpose of this series that I've been on and on and on. I'm sure by now some of you must be wondering, when is this series going to end? It's not ending yet. <laughs> we still have one or two things to learn. But I'm believing God that by the time we are finishing, God will have at least one individual who will say, come what me. I am standing for God. Now, just to encourage you further, and this will be in conclusion for today, What is the wisdom in holding on to something you know you can keep when you can exchange it for something you can't lose? Matthew 16, from verse 24 to 25. Matthew 16, 24 to 25. It says, the one who says, I want to save my life. I don't want to die. I don't want trouble. He said, you are trying to protect your life. You lose it. But if you release your life to me, if you lose it as it were, for my sake, then you keep it. It is possible to be too careful and end up a loser. In a situation like that, it is wiser to let go everything and let God take control. God is looking for someone who will say, God, my life is in your hand. I leave it there. Whatever you want me to be, I'm ready. Wherever you want me to go, I'm ready. Whatever you want me to do, I am ready. Irrespective of what may follow. When God finds such a man, he will be delighted. And don't forget, if you are such a person, he will be with you. And you, Listen to me today, who might not even be born again yet, might be the one God is looking for. Why don't you come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ? I remember the story of the Redeemed Christian Church of God several years ago. My father in the Lord then was getting old, and the people were concerned. Who is going to succeed him? And they looked at the pastors. They saw some things in the pastors that some of them didn't like. And they began to query the old man. Who is going to succeed you? Who is going to succeed you? And he told them, God said to me, the one who will succeed me is not even yet born again. He hasn't come yet. When he comes, I will know. You know what? The one listening to me right now, you might be the one God is looking for. Why don't you surrender your life to Jesus Christ? 
You might be the one God is looking for, for the salvation of your family, or for the salvation of your church, where you might be just an attendant fellow, you, you are not even born again. Or even the salvation of your nation. Maybe you are the one God is looking for. Why don't you surrender to him and let him take over from here? So anyone listening to me, and you are not yet born again, and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, if you bow your head now and say, Lord, I am here. I'm ready to surrender everything to you. I want to put my entire life, my entire future into your hands. If you bow your heads now and pray, it's a very simple prayer. I say, Lord, save my soul. I will pray for you. And I know you will do it. Thank you, Father. Thank you once again for your word. Blessed be your holy name. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As for those who are saying, Lord, we surrender all to you. Just take over our lives. Please, these people who are just surrendering to you now, receive them. Save their souls. Wash them clean with your blood. And then turn them to mighty vessels unto honor in your hands. So that your name and your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Again, I rejoice with those of you who have just surrendered your life to Jesus. I want to promise you from now on, I'll be praying for you. So please let me have your details, your names, your address, your prayer requests. And I'll be praying for you. And please locate the nearest Redeemed Christian Church of God to you. Tell the pastor there, you're now born again, and he will tell you what to do next. God bless you. And now for those of us who are already children of God, and we want to say to the Almighty God, if you are looking for a man, looking for a woman, here am I, O Lord. Send me. May he hear your prayer and answer it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to